Hey everybody and welcome back to Mal's Board Game Room. So today I'm taking a closer look at Xylotar. So I played Xylotar last year for the first time when it was published under the name Magic, uh, Magic Trick. And it was so good. We've been keeping an eye on it, trying to get our own copy of this because it was personally, or the, the designer, which is uh, Chris Ray, had self-published it. But it was such a great game, we know it was going retail at some point. And it did. So I actually purchased this copy on Amazon. Uh, it was, you know, readily available and fairly uh, inexpensive. It's not always the case on Amazon. So I was able to get my own copy. What's really cool about Xylotar is it's a trick taking game and you play it blind. So that means with your cards, you know what the suits are, but you don't know what the value of the cards are, yet you're playing a trick taking game and you're actually gonna be bidding on this game. So let me give you, uh, show you what it looks like here real quick. So here is the game, it's mostly set up. Now before I get into it, this is what Magic Trick looked like. Um, it had kind of bigger cards, you had to stagger them. Now in this game, you still need a very large table to play this, so you may still want to stagger them, but the cards are quite a bit narrow um, and easier to to fit on the table. But there's there's a lot of cards. There's 63, oh, 65 cards. Now what's cool with this here is Xylotar will play uh, three, well, what does it say? Three to five players. But there is also a variant for two players, and I'll cover that at the end here. So first, let me show you how Xylotar plays. So you shuffle the cards. I'm set up here for four players, and you everybody gets a, a pile of cards. So first thing you're, doing, you're going to do is sort it in order, like from lowest to highest. So I'm just going to sort this one real quick here. All right, we've got some seven, we've got some eight, we've got some one. This is also a really good time to try to memorize about what uh, what is in here. Now, because this is not your hand, this is going to be going to the player next to you. So it kind of gives you an insight a little bit of what they have. So now I have it in order. I'm going to put on there the high note card and hand it over to them. Now, I've already got my high notes. I'll put this one aside. And then you will place your cards all I know is that they're going in order from high to low. I know what suits they are because I can see that. And I know for each suit what the range of the card numbers is going to be. But I have no idea what is what for sure. So now I'm going to put this aside. So we've got this all set up. We're ready to start. So this is a trick taking game. So if I start the trick, I'm going to pick any card. And let's say I'm the first player. Let's say I play this one. Now what's nice with starting in the middle is, this is a reveal this, so it's a four. So I know that everything above this is gonna be higher than four. It normally be like four or higher, but this is the same color, so I know it's not a four. It's already, the yellow four is already here. So this is gonna be five and higher, and this is gonna be four and lower. So I know this much, so I play this. Now, um, Trick taking game. So everybody, the suit right now is yellow. So everybody has to play a yellow if they can. So this player here only has one yellow. So he has to play this one and he's playing an eight. Um, so this person here has a couple of yellows. He's going to play. Now at some point during this game, we're also going to bid on what we want to, um, how many tricks we think we can win. And he has quite a bit of red towards the high. Now what's interesting with red is red is uh, trump. So if you can't play the suit, you would play a red, red wins. So that's interesting. So he's going to play his lowest one because he doesn't want to waste, being that there's an eight here, he doesn't want to waste his lowest card because he thinks he can get a lot of tricks, so he wants to win some tricks. And he played a two. And this person here will play this one, and this person played a one. So this is the winner of the trick. So he would take all of these cards, put them face down on the side here to show that he won that trick. I'm not sure if I'm completely off. I'm, I am, you can't see that, so I'll put it up here just to indicate that these are the tricks he's won because I'm off camera there. Now, when you play at a lower player count, you would remove the red and the orange and the pink would then become, the pink or the yellow? I think the yellow then becomes the, the trump. So. That's a variation if you have a lower player count. So 
he won the trick, so he would start the next trick. And let's say he plays this one, and that's a four. So now he knows those are higher than four, though, or equal to, and those are lower or four or lower on this end. So he played an orange. This one can only play this one, so he has to play this. And he is playing a five. This person here has a lot of orange. So he's going to go mid-range, just kind of get a feel of things and where it's at. So I have no orange. Now I can go off suit and I can play anything I want. I can then play my red. If I played a red, I would win this trick because red is trump. Um, I'm not sure if I'm ready to do that just yet. Do I want to win? You know what? I'm going to play this one and see what I get. I get a five. I'm off suit. So um, I don't win this one. This trick goes to this player. So this player now uh, would play the next one. Let's say he plays this one. So as I mentioned, you also bid on how many tricks you want to win this round. This bid also is blind. So let's say he shows this one. He's bidding three. He's got a lot of red. He can now, if he wants to bid on the trick that he wants to do, he's going to do this after he plays before the next person plays. He's like, okay, hold up. I'm going to bid and he would pick any two cards that are adjacent to each other and use that for the bid. So let's say he'll look at these two. Well, these are three. He's got a lot of red. Maybe he looks at these two. So this one is a five. This one is a six. Now he wouldn't show this to everybody. This is just for the video. Um, but then he can pick one of those to be his bid got a lot of red he's kind of counting on being able to win that way so let's say he bids five and puts this down back into play here and that's his trick that's his bid as I mentioned normally that would be behind off camera but you know so we're putting it in play here okay and then we go back and continue the trick so this guy only has one boost so he can't be playing this one he plays a two I'll play this one and I played a five and this one hasn't played one yet, and he only has one, so he has to play this, and it's a four. Now, on the card, it shows you that it goes from zero to five for these ones. It shows you what their range are for each suit. So I was knowing that I'd be winning this one. So that's great. I've won my first trick. I'll put it back here to show that I've won a trick, and I get to start the next round. Okay. Um, let's say that I'll play this one. And this one is a three. Now, I could bid if I want to, or I could keep going. But so that's the way that the game plays. Now, at the end of the game, you get one point for every trick you've won. And if you matched your bid, you have, in this case, I bid five. And if this player had five tricks, then you would get a bonus five points. Now, that's not because this is a five. If you match your bid, you get bonus five points no matter what you bid. Now you can bid zero, so if you manage not to win any trick but you bid zero, you don't get any points for tricks one, but you get five points for matching your bid, so that's neat. You play three rounds, and after three rounds, the player with the most points is the winner. Now let me talk to you a little bit about the two-player variation. So in the two-player variation, you still set up just like this with four players. And then the, I would be in a player, this person would be another player. These are the dummy players. And you would take the eighth card, so the middle card, and reveal that at the start of the game and put it aside, and that's their bid. So as we play the game, every time that I would play, so you would take the lowest card that matched the suit. So the lowest one matching suit so it'd be this one that would play so you always play your lowest um, allowable play so if you didn't have any more of these greens you would take then you would have to play off suit and you would play the lowest card off suit and so on so then you kind of keep track of what they win what we win and so on now if one of those dummy players match their bid so if one of them match their bid um, you don't get to score, to score your tricks that round, but if you match your, um, your own bid, you get five points still. Now, if both dummy players match their bid, then you don't get to score any points this round. So I thought that was kind of an interesting way to kind of create a two-player version of a trick-taking game. And that's how Xylotar plays.
let me just get back here. So yeah, so that's just a quick overview of how Zalatar plays. It's such a cool, cool game. I was blown away when I first played it under the name of Magic Trick. It is so cool. A uh, blind trick taking game. Who would have thought? So if you have a chance, be sure to give this game uh, a try. It is so much fun. Uh, I'll be sure to bring my copy to Falcon. So if you want to play it, uh, I'll have it at Falcon if you're attending. Um, so yeah, that's all for that. So be sure to follow me on Facebook. My Facebook page is Mal's Board Game Room. I'm also on Instagram as Mal underscore Board Game underscore Room. I have a podcast that I do with my friend Carla called The Board Game Specialist. And of course on YouTube under Mal's Board Game Room. Bye everybody.